morning, New Life Church children, and all of us here are sending our love and welcome to you all. It's great to be back with you again and to continue our series on what is the gospel? What is the good news of God that we find in the Bible? Well, let's carry on with what we've already learned, and then we can, fi- we can do our last talk on actually on what the gospel is what we need to believe to understand the good news of God. So what was the first thing that we learned? We learned that God is our creator. God made us and so he owns us and he has the right to tell us what to do. The second thing is that he is holy. He is holy, which means that he is perfect in every way. Every way. There is nothing There is no darkness. There is no sin in our God. He is perfect in every way. So that's what we learned about God. Then we learned that man was created like God, wasn't he? He was created holy in the same way. Man wasn't God, but God was, man was made like God in that he was perfect in every way. And in the Garden of Eden, they had a perfect, close relationship. There was nothing in between them. That stopped them from having a wonderful, close relationship and fellowship. But we know something happened, don't we? Adam and Eve refused to listen to God's rules. And so, what entered into the world, children? Sin. Sin entered into our world. And it affected the relationship that we have with God. It separated us. It put a barrier between us that we could not have the relationship that we had before the Garden of Eden. But children, we also know that it wasn't just Adam and Eve who sinned. We choose to sin every single day. We rebel against God's law and his rules, don't we? We don't do what God asks us to do. And so just like Adam and Eve, we are also sinners. We are sinners. What is our biggest problem, children? Our biggest problem is that we are sinners and we are separated from our God. And there is no way of us being able to get back to God on our own because why? Sin is in the way. So it says, remember, in Isaiah chapter 59, verses 2, That's an important verse that I want us to hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face um, from you so you do not, so he does not hear. So what did we, what did our sin do? Remember, it turned God's face away from us. And that was really, really sad news for us, that God no longer had his face turned towards us. He was turned away and he could no longer hear us because of the sin that we had chosen to do. But what happened? We know that God in his grace did something amazing. God in his goodness did something amazing. What did he do? He gave us Jesus. And Jesus, who is God, bore our sins. He took our sins. And what did he do with those sins? He took them away. He cleansed our sin. He bore the punishment on the cross for our sin, didn't he? We were supposed to be punished for the sin that we did. But was, did, we, did we get that punishment? No. God said, I am going to send Jesus And Jesus willingly said, I will take that punishment for sin. And he did that. He did that for you. And he did that for me, children. So that is an amazing thought, isn't it? That God did this for us. But there's something else that we need to understand. Just because Jesus did this wonderful thing doesn't necessarily make us right with God. Does it? There is something that we have to do. There is something very important that we have to do. And there are two things that we need to do. One, 
we need to repent of our sins. And two, we need to believe what God did through Jesus to save us from our sins. Okay, so what are the two things that we need to do? One, we need to repent. And two, we need to believe that God has done this for us. It says in Mark chapter 1, verses 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Children, we need to repent and believe in the gospel in order for sin to be taken out of the way and for us to be made right with God. So what does repent mean? Okay, repent means to say sorry, to say sorry, okay? To say sorry for what we have done wrong. Guys, we have done things that are wrong towards God. And if we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I'm so sorry for the things that I have done that have shown my disobedience to you, that shows my rebellion towards you. I'm sorry for those things. You know what the Lord says he will do? He says that he will come into us. He will come into us and he will cleanse us. He will cleanse us. What does it say in 1 John 1 verses 9? It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Children, if we come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness of our sins, the Lord says he's faithful to forgive us. But we need to come and admit that we are sinners and we need a savior. And then the second thing is we need to believe. We need to believe that what Jesus did on the cross for us is exactly what was needed to forgive us of our sins. That Jesus came and died on the cross in our place so that we could be forgiven of our sins and that we could come back into a right relationship with God. So children, what are the two things that we need to do? Okay, we need to repent of our sins and we need to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We need to believe and we need to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when we do that, God says he hears us. He hears us. And we need to believe that he does forgive us of our sins and that he restores our relationship back with him so that we can be not perfect. We won't be perfect, but now we don't want that sin in our life. We fight that sin and God gives us the grace to overcome it. Children, this is an amazing story, but it's not the sto a story that isn't true. This is true of what God has done for us to solve the biggest problem we have of sin and our relationship, that, that sin that stops us from having a relationship with him. We are blessed to have this gift from God, that he has given us this way to come back to him by believing that Jesus did die for our sins, by admitting and repenting that we are sinners, and then believing that everything that God said he would do for in Jesus and that he would forgive us of our sins is the truth. So what do we need to do when we see what Jesus did on the cross for us? We need to repent of our sins and we need to believe that everything that God told us about Jesus and what he is, would do is true. So we need to also understand that it says, in John 14, verses 6, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Children, the only way we can get back to God in fellowship is through Jesus. But let's praise God that he gave us Jesus and he gave us this way to be made right with him. Let's thank God for this amazing gift that he has given us. And it says in the Bible that this is a gift that God has done for us. And if we repent and believe, 
God promises to cleanse us and forgive us. Blessings, children. We hope that you help you understand more of what the gospel is. And if you have any questions, you are welcome to come and ask or send me a message and I can respond to you. Well, let's send our love to everybody. Love, ev love, re love to everyone. Blessings. Can't wait to see you. Bye.